On this episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast, we talk about Sailing the Seas of Cheese by Primus. Welcome to another episode of the Bronze Medalist. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. We're two professional broadcasters. We mm-hmm. like metal and we like to talk about it. And sometimes we like to think talk about things that are arguably metal. But metal adjacent more Metal like. adjacent. Yeah. I, I mean, I Wikipedia lists them as funk metal. Mm-hmm. But you know the funny thing is they're not really funky. I mean, there's a lot of slap bass going on there, but it's not a whole lot of funkiness. I I would call this funky music, but not necessarily. It's not funky the way that uh, Wolfpack is funky. No, it it's is not funky in the way that it's fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is, I mean, this is a far more digestible album uh, than something like uh, uh, what we listened to a few weeks ago, right? With, with Trout Mask Replica, this mm-hmm. is. This is far more digestible, but uh, uh, certainly still right. Quite weird, fairly mm-hmm. fairly tongue in cheek, fairly silly. Uh, that's Primus's deal, mm-hmm. so, but well, very enjoyable. Yeah, it's very enjoyable. And I'm sure I'd, by the time uh, that sperm met egg and uh, kale progressed on from there, I'd listen to this several hundred times. Probably this came out in in nineteen ninety one ninety one. So we'll we'll uh, get to talking about this more. In a bit. First, uh, uh, how, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. I think I'm doing better than you. I mean, I got a little yeah. bit of a headache. My, my my belly is aching, but I don't care. Whatever. You, my friend, are exhausted. I can see it on your face. Yeah. Are, are you going to be okay? Do you need something? I'm... Uh- I think I'm angry enough that that it's going to carry me through. I don't know. I'm just like all week long. I've yep. just been tired and fucking pissed off and, and cranky. Yeah, ti- just tired and cranky. <clears throat> and I've got shingles again. Right. And I think that's probably the result of the tired and cranky. Probably. I mean, possibly. Yeah. I had to. Well, and I fucked up my sleep schedule at the beginning of the week because I had to get up early and go to the doctor. Right. Uh, so I could get medication. And that's probably keeping me tired and mm-hmm. angry uh i guess i didn't look at the side effects of the antiviral they gave me but i imagined a bit of grogginess might be in there but uh, maybe yeah i've just i've been in kind of a piss poor mood all week and it's a really fucking busy week for us too sure we got a ton of remotes that every we're day doing. man uh so and <clears throat> tomorrow and friday i'm going to have to be at work until at least six so yeah, no, it's I got more I got more ahead of me, but fuck yeah. it. But uh, fuck it. But yeah. just but fuck it. Yeah. Get on in there, do some anal. But um <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I went kayaking on Saturday. Right. Had, you know, that was a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh was uh went for about seven and a half miles. Mm-hmm. Uh <clears throat> let my I learned some new techniques, mm-hmm. watched a video. I I uh figured out that uh, my form is absolute trash Mm -hmm. it's still absolute trash but it's better than it was um kind of i learned what at least the goal is for the proper way to paddle at least the basics Mm -hmm. of of what you're supposed to do Mm -hmm. which is you're supposed to have the paddle be in the water yeah he's taking his headphones off because this is weird um uh i've i haven't been noticing we've been having weird headphone problems yeah uh but uh, you're supposed to put the paddle in the water as mm-hmm. close to the side of the kayak mm-hmm. as possible and ah. keep it as close to the side of the kayak as possible. To almost graze the edge of the boat. Yeah, just about. Um, and that requires a pretty high angle. Sure. Uh, and that's for when you're going straight, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and that that generally will save you a little bit of energy. Uh, def- you want to engage your core and rotate a little bit. Don't let it all just be in the arms. You mm-hmm. want to engage your legs as well and use those for leverage. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so there's all kind. And then I learned like sweeping strokes for turning because uh, when I would try to turn the first couple of times I went out, it was like I would have to, you know, paddle like 40 times to mm-hmm. turn around. And it would be this huge, <clears throat> massive. Sure. Uh, arc where now I learned the proper way to do it, which is you still put in right at the same place, mm-hmm. and then you push as far out as possible, 
Uh, right, like uh, a triangle kind of. Yeah, as you're going back, and that will swing you around in about a, mm-hmm. a, a you know, of turning around is 180 degrees. That'll get you about 60. Uh, nice. Oh, for with one. Yeah. So nice. about three strokes, and you're turned all the way around. So mm-hmm. that 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 works. That's <clears throat> that that was a thing that I learned how to do. Um, and yeah, on the way back, I like I took some I took some pictures, and I. They were very nice pictures. Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. I found a nice rock in the shade to eat some snacks mm-hmm. on. Uh, and then I, on my way back, my left arm really, really tried to cramp up because mm-hmm. uh, I went a little mm-hmm. bit farther than I was probably entirely comfortable with. Sure. Uh, and hadn't quite realized just how far away I had gone. And uh, my left bicep kept on threatening to cramp up, but it never, it never did. Did you rub it out a bit? I mean, did you? Yeah, you I, st- a- I stretched. Mm-hmm. I stopped and did some stretches with it. It's nice, too, because if your arms start cramping up, you do have a paddle there with you to right. kind of put help. it behind your back. Yeah, and- put it behind your back and swing it around and, mm-hmm. you know, help stretch your arms out. So that was, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I can go out again this weekend if it's not terribly windy. Right. It's uh, supposed to be like temperature supposed five to, be to 15 good. miles yeah. an hour. Yeah. And the temperature is supposed to be fairly decent. Upper so. 70s. Yeah. Yeah. So I hopefully I'll be able to go out more just because it's it's uh, mostly what I think about now is I'm just like I'm just pissed off and I'm like, I just want to be mm. on the water and away from people. So there might be a downside to the whole kayaking thing. You've, you've now found something so wonderful <laughs> that you don't want to not be doing that. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I want to be doing it all the time. Yeah. Um, so there's that. But uh, hey, you know, there are worse things to be sure to be wanting to do all the time. Like cocaine. Yeah, hookers. that could I could be doing that. I mean, that's I, what I'm at. <laughs> no, yeah. <clears throat> Who doesn't want to be doing cocaine? Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the that's 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 sort of where where I'm at at the moment. Uh, and just trying to I need to I, like I'm just stuck in this negative feedback. Loop sure. At the moment. And I just need to figure a way out of it. Mm-hmm. I reinstalled Doom Eternal and Did started you? started a new campaign. You're doing it on your computer, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm starting a new campaign, mm-hmm. uh, preparing for the DLC to come out next month. There's uh, DLC for Doom Eternal? Yeah. It's called The Old Gods Part 1. Damn it. Oh, um, which means there's going to be more. Yeah. Yes, there's there's going to be more. They've been uh, they've been working on story DLC. Um and they have they have a new composer cuz things didn't work out with Mick. Oh no. Uh have you heard any of it? Uh, yeah. So what ended up happening? Because, I mean, we talked about this a while ago and the yeah. full story wasn't really out. What ended up happening, uh, at least according to uh, one of the developers at id, mm-hmm. was that uh, mm-hmm. part of the reason why things weren't working out with him and why they ended up having to release like all of these uh, uh, pretty much ripped out of the game that he didn't mix that yeah. he didn't mix is because he was contractually obligated mm-hmm. to complete a certain number of tracks for the album release. Right. And also, and he would get paid extra for every song he mixed and put on the album by the time it was supposed to come out. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the time that the album was supposed to re- be released, he had only mixed like nine out of the 11 or so tracks he sure. was supposed to do. Uh, and was like not communicating with them at all. Mm-hmm. Being so, an artist. Yeah, he was <laughs> he was being an artist. Um, and the thing is, is like they had already given him, given him a lot of leeway mm-hmm. and given him extensions and more time. And, <clears throat> and they it just kind of had to put their foot down and they put the the audio director in kind of a difficult position of like, well, we have these tracks that we promised to people who mm-hmm. bought our you know who, who bought our special edition we have to release them uh you know we we can't just not release these tracks they paid that, for this that people paid for yeah and so they they kind of had to they were forced mick kind of forced them to put out a a, a subpar version of what people were promised right because he wasn't willing to communicate and and deliver what he promised them mm-hmm. uh or what he uh, contractually agreed to so it was it was kind of on him mm-hmm. Uh, and as much as, you know, me as a music fan wanting to be like, just let the artists do what they want. No, it's, it's a, a lot, business. <laughs> yeah. And it's also a lot more yeah. complicated when it's a when you have a band mm-hmm. who is making everything to do with that product. Like 
you know, the, 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 the band is working on the album Mm -hmm. and the album is the only thing, right? There's when you have music involved in a game, Mm -hmm. there are so many other moving pieces and so many other parts, right. Uh, that you have to keep pace with. And, uh, uh, it's a much, a much different playing field. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're going with, uh, an artist who I, I cannot remember what his name is, uh, his name is Andrew Hushalt. Um Hull Schult. Hull Schult. Andrew, Andrew Hull Schult. Where is he from? Uh he is American. Ah. What other games has he composed? Well, he's done a number of other id projects, um, uh, including the soundtracks for Quake Champions, uh, and other first person shooters. Uh so it seems like he's a good fit mm-hmm. for uh he actually did the soundtrack for Brutal Doom, which which is actually a mod. Uh, for the original Doom that makes it gorier. <laughs> really? For yes. Which, which original Doom? Like the original, Doom. like original Doom. Original yeah, Doom. the original. Uh, Brutal Doom came out, I think, in like 2010. Uh-huh. Essentially, it was it was like a a mod that was so popular it got like a full release. Essentially, um, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, apparently sounds like a great band name too. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he uh, he is i you know he's set fairly accomplished so i'm i'm excited to hear his he did a quake his game soundtrack uh i knew a girl who considered herself a quake widow a quake widow yeah that her her husband played so much quake that he was dead to her right basically i see uh so yeah i'm, I'm excited for that so i've been i i got my new mouse mm-hmm. to replace my one nice. that, that got busted so i you're right you're over overly fancy mouse my overly fancy mouse mm-hmm. that shit the bed after six months. So hopefully this one is a little bit more reliable. Right. It's pretty much as comfortable. It's got the features I want and it was half the price. So nice. Uh, uh, and you still have the money you spent on the other one. But yeah, it's I mean, this one's a Logitech, too. So it's like I, I've never really heard like Logitech's all oh, they break. No, it's never heard that. It's, it's a Logitech. Mm-hmm. So it, it should be all right. Um but uh, yeah, I, I think after I'm done with this, I might play some more Doom Eternal. I've, mm-hmm. I, I'm playing on Nightmare and I was worried that after because I haven't played since May mm-hmm. and I, I was worried that like, oh, you know, if I start a new campaign instead of playing Doom, you know, new game plus. Yeah. Uh, if I start an entirely new campaign without all my weapons and my upgrades and stuff. Yeah. I'm going to suck. And I started playing it again on Nightmare, which is the second <laughs> highest difficulty. Right. It's like, oh, no, I can do this. Right. It was like riding a bike. It yeah, was, you know, I actually kind of did that with the 2016 version of Doom. I, I got to the big boss battle, <laughs> and I tried to beat him a bunch of times. I took your advice and everything, and I still sucked. So I decided, you know what? I, I'm, I'm, I'm off of my rhythm. I need to go back and play it, because I had that was my second one. I had a yeah. uh, uh, first game that I had got stuck in a place. Yeah. And then I went back to that place where I was stuck, and it was like a hot knife through butter. I mean, yeah. just, I, I got all the way back to the main bad guy. <laughs> yeah, that can that can happen sometimes. That was yeah. great. I'm 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 excited. There's all kinds of neat story stuff that seems to be happening in the the new DLC for. Yeah, Eternal, there's not so. as much story stuff in the in there, the one from four years ago. Yeah, 2016 doesn't really have a a, a whole lot. I mean, there no. Doom's story is. A bit more overt than something like Dark Souls. Sure. 2016 is is less overt. Doom Eternal is is more so. Right. But like Dark Souls is you're dropped into this world and there's a ton of interesting lore and mm-hmm. stuff that's going on, but none of it is told to you. Really? None, none of it is explained to you other than... You have to dig for all of it or... Yeah, you kind of have to dig for all of it and, mm-hmm. and figure things out and really mm-hmm. listen to like what NPCs are saying when you mm-hmm. talk to them to actually piece it together. Like it, none of it is, none of is, none of it is outright stated. Right. Um, but in, in Doom, it kind of, you know, you get to a place and here's the dude and yeah, and he's going to tell you about it. He's going to tell you about some of the things, but yeah. there's, especially in 2016, there was a lot left to the imagination yeah. that has been filled in, in Eternal to kind of explain uh, some of the things mm-hmm. uh, like the, well, I guess I don't want to spoil that for you necessarily, necessarily, but uh, there's a, there was a theory in 2016. 16 that mm-hmm. was hinted at that people were like that would be weird if that was actually the case it was actually the case <laughs> nice which i think makes it even more awesome 
uh, and that you find out in Doom Eternal. Yeah, I gotta get back to playing Doom Eternal. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, just just play it on. Uh, uh, I'm too young to die. Yeah, totally. Just, just play it on. I'm too young to die. Have uh-huh. and and have fun. Right. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> I got, I got like family and kids and yeah. everybody, you know, the kids are always every other day like, I'm hungry, dad, let me out of here, you know. <laughs> Only every other day. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I got to stop playing video games so I can, and I restarted playing <laughs> Skyrim. Did I tell you that? I told you You that. did. Yeah. You're finally awake. <laughs> they caught you trying to sneak across the border into Skyrim. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you do a really good Nord accent. Yeah, there. well, because <laughs> the Nord accent is so weird because it's like clearly supposed to be like Eastern European kind of or well, Northern I, European. It, it's supposed to be like Norwegian, but mm-hmm. they clearly had an American voice actor. Sure. And they were just like, just make this sound vaguely Nordic. You don't need to actually try right. Because this is not Norway, it's Skyrim. Yeah, this is Skyrim. It's yeah. a fantasy world. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Uh, that's that's a nice thing about like doing voices for D&D games uh-huh. when I'm DMing is yeah. if someone's like, well, that's not really what that accent is. And it's like, that's what it is in this world, bitch. <laughs> it's yeah. my world of my creation. I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> I'm God. Uh, that's mm. totally how I act towards yeah. my players at all it times. Is, it is not how you act. No. No. I uh, uh, I am the most self-conscious and anxious dungeon master you will ever meet. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, that's really you in general. Yeah, that's I just think. that's just me. I see, my <laughs> my problem with with yeah. dungeon mastering right mm-hmm. is I love every part of it except act, the part where I actually sit at the table and host a game for people. Really, uh, I love like building a world and designing maps and coming up with characters and mm-hmm. cities and Story, places where yeah. like this is where the monsters are and here's why the monsters are here and this here's this mountain range where these dwarves live. Why mm-hmm. do they live there? Like I love coming up with all that geographical shit sure. of just like like the how and why things are where they are Mm -hmm. i love that part but being the master of ceremonies itself yeah when i have to translate all of the lore i've come up with into a story for people to make or or you know an adventure for people to take part in i really struggle to to keep that up week after week after week Mm -hmm. um and and i'm kind of now like playing with the idea of because I've been trying to do more like focused sort of narrative campaigns and that's been what like that that's how I've DM'd mm-hmm. and I, I, I want to do it a little bit more you know West March's style is what some people call it where it's it's you know you have a world uh, and I, I think West March's is not even like you have a world <clears throat> it's just like you come up with a 20 mile square area and <laughs> when they move to that you like yeah. like it's Minecraft you randomly generate more land sure. and it doesn't necessarily have to make sense like I, I want to have the world and have things happen in it but don't have a explicit hook mm. for the players just like I, I would love to have a, a get a group together mm-hmm. and say, OK, you guys are five adventurers that already know each other. You've been, you know, adventuring together for a couple only a couple of weeks at this point. You're mm-hmm. not super familiar, but for whatever reason, you agreed to become a troop and uh, you are in this town looking for work. Mm-hmm. And you've got your own motivations and you've got, you know, maybe you have plans that you want to achieve and you'll have to talk to the party about whether or not you're going to pursue that. Uh, and things will happen around them and it's up to them to take part in sure. whatever it is that's happening instead of trying to force players into like, here is the story. Here's what's going to happen. And like I've always had groups that are willing to follow along with that. Sure. But then it puts so much pressure on me to come up with the next thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I can just say work into your backstories, Mm -hmm. something that your character wants to do and wants to accomplish someplace they want to go, a person they want to meet or kill Mm -hmm. or uh, you want them to play the game. Yeah. uh, Like work that and I'll fill in the blanks. Sure. 
and, you know, convince the rest of your party that this is a goal worth following. No, I used to uh, play with this one guy. We would take turns. It was, there was four of us and we would rotate DMing every like uh, every game session, not, not necessarily yeah. every week, but just every storyline. We'd come to an end. Yeah. Like a short little arc. Yeah. Uh, we'd have an arc and then somehow we'd be finished and everybody goes home and has ice cream. And, yeah. and uh, <laughs> but then there was this one guy who always DM and he always had a stack of papers yep. with a lot of shit written on the papers. Yep. And then we, and then we, he'd say, well, this happens and try to guide us in this one. And we go, yeah, yeah, but we, we want to go over there. Over here. And, and then, you just yeah, yeah crumple up the paper, throw yeah. it away. Yeah. He was so pissed by the end of the session. And that shit's always going to happen. Yeah. I, I I feel like I've been lucky and that I've often had cooperative players who are, are willing to go with what I came up with because mm-hmm. either they're humoring me or they actually find it interesting. I or maybe am, both. I'm too afraid to ask them. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, that'd be a weird thing to do, though. You're in the middle of the game. You guys like what we're doing? Do you guys actually like this or are you just, you know, trying to make me feel good? Uh, but uh, uh, I, I have had some curveballs thrown at me in the sense mm-hmm. that like the last the last like full campaign that I did uh, and I've only actually ever finished one mm-hmm. campaign, too. Mm-hmm. But like the, the last full campaign that I that I DM'd, uh that, you know, lasted more than a few sessions was uh uh, um, the original plan was like, OK, you know, classic, you know, non-homogenous group of adventurers. You're all different races and sure. classes. You're and a motley you, crew. Yeah, you're, you're a motley crew who doesn't know each other and you meet in a tavern and go. And <sighs> it's that sort of th- I was planning on it being that sort of thing. And then behind mm-hmm. my back, everyone was like, yeah, we're all going to be siblings. <laughs> We're all going to be from this country that uh, just got different races. (laughs) (laughs) No, they weren't. They were all humans. Oh, they're all humans. Uh, And they were all from my my fantasy world's version of Scandinavia. Sure. Essentially that I just gotten pulled into like this Holy Roman Empire type deal. And so that created tension. I wasn't necessarily planning on having every character have Mm -hmm. of like, oh, we're from this country that just got invaded. But we're now in we're now, you know, adventuring through the country that just took over our homeland sure and, and we're going to have tension with letter literally every imperial official we meet <laughs> like it, it i was not planning on that so that was a bit of a curveball but it also allowed me to basically just rip off the plot of god of war <laughs> and say okay your mom just died time to take her ashes to the top of the tallest mountain <laughs> by the way the You're tallest Loki. mountain yeah. is 800 miles from you <laughs> Uh, because I essentially had them ad- journeying from. Did you literally actually say fucking God of War? Did no, you really I, do that? I, I didn't. I didn't literally say that. <laughs> yeah. but it was it was fairly obvious to everybody, but like or everyone in the party that had played God of War. Yeah. But uh, uh, I um uh, basically had them adventuring from like uh, the fantasy equivalent of Berlin. To the or the fantasy equivalent of like Paris or something like sure. that. It's on the western part of this continent. Post World War Two or pre World War Two is not that overt necessarily. It's, I'm talking just distance wise. Okay, yeah, uh, just distance wise. Basically, a journey on on foot or by boat from Paris to Moscow. To Moscow uh, is essentially the sort of distance they were working. With. Wow, uh, from Paris to Hoboken. Yes, from Paris across the ocean to Hoboken, New Jersey. Uh, but uh, I, I, I really like the world that I built. I think I've shown you the map of it. It's you know, oh yeah, I've seen that. It's really fleshed yeah. out, and I, mm-hmm. I like the countries and organizations I've come up with. I just need to figure out a way to introduce people to that that I can actually manage. You know, the way you're talking about this, I, I figure you you have all this lavish extreme with you know, there's it's. You know, all of this in there that you're saying. And then when you get to the party, you become Milton. <laughs> and they, we're going to travel today from over here. Then. Yeah, that's that. No, that's kind of <laughs> that, that's kind of how, how it ends up for me. Yeah. Uh, depending upon. <clears throat> I don't know. It depends on how I feel. I, it's, hmm. I, how would you do it this week? <laughs> I mean, I feel like I'm doing okay right now. Yeah, I'm just letting the I'm just letting the rage and the beer fuel me right and now. Yeah, so. and j- just so you know, earlier today because I because I know you, I know what was going on, and I was listening for it. I'm listening. Okay, are there any breaks in kale? Is it, are there any cracks in the facade going on here? And there weren't. I was actually very impressed when I was at the the remote. When you're at the remote at, at the tough trucks place. Yeah. 
uh, where they did the burnout and a bunch of pink dust. That was cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, it actually looked probably. I saw the video of it that Scott took. Yeah, it was fair. It was fairly neat. <laughs> I just tried to, to open a half full beer. A half full beer that are also pop offs. Yeah. <laughs> you tried to open it with your hand. Wow. And I, I didn't snort anything on the you way over. You don't even right? have shingles. I d- <laughs> You're right. I'm not taking the. You're not taking the antivirals. That makes you logy, apparently. Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of being loopy and weird and uh, Primus and angry, let's talk about Primus. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, Primus, as according to Wikipedia, mm-hmm. the free encyclopedia. Yes. Uh, is an American. Mm-hmm. They call it funk metal. Mm-hmm. I think they it, it is perhaps fair to just call them experimental rock. Sure. Or alternative rock mm-hmm. or perhaps alternative metal. They're in a nebulous sort of area where they're. Uh, Fairly aggressive on most of their sound, but mm-hmm. they are so, at least on this album, which is the the only thing I'm you know super familiar with. Sure, yeah, from and Primus they're, and their guitar sound- player is one of the founding members of one of the most important uh, death metal bands. Really, who's the guitar player? Larry Lalonde. Uh, what what is he known for? He was in. Oh, it's it's escaping me. He was in possessed. Uh, possessed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, but like the their their sound, I mean, they are a uh, or have been at least for most of their career, a trio, as mm-hmm. I understand. Just different. Some different members. But yeah, the uh, different members. Les Claypool has been the, the only constant member yes. of of Primus. But uh, they uh, uh, there's their sound is so stripped down not mm-hmm. that the, not to say that the songwriting is not complex right it's just that the the actual like layers of sound is so relatively bare bones to what you would expect from something you would call metal mm-hmm. which is generally much more dense right uh and much more noisy that i cannot totally understand why you know you wouldn't call that call them metal even though they are uh, aggressive sort of yeah they're aggressively weird <laughs> There's plenty of points on here where Les Claypool is screaming at you. Yeah. But what he's saying while he's screaming is just completely nonsensical and bizarre. Well, not always nonsensical. I mean, there's some pretty deep tracks on this. I mean, like it uh, takes some interpretation, like, but like I would agree. American life. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I won't I won't say that it's just complete. This is not complete nonsense. There's and good I'm sure stories. That, in yeah. Here. Like those it's, damn blue collar tweakers. It's just that, <laughs> you know, the whatever serious point that may be underlying, it is delivered through so many layers of irony and silliness <laughs> that it, it may be hard to discern sure. uh, if you're not really thinking about it or perhaps overthinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Primus is such a such an interesting band. And the story of Les Claypool as well. Yeah. So I pop, I knew it as, oh, Les Claypool tried out for Metallica and yeah. was was rejected. So what happened was he was like childhood friends with Kirk Hammett or mm-hmm. he was like he was just he was good friends with Kirk Hammett. Mm-hmm. Uh, and after it was after Cliff Burton it was after died. Cliff died. Yeah. yeah after Cliff was. died, Kirk Hammett encouraged him to try out for Metallica mm-hmm. and he tried out for Metallica and, uh, what at the very least, what, uh, um, oh no, why can't I think of the James Hetfield? Yeah. What apparently what James Hetfield says. Yeah. said was that he was too good for them <laughs> and needed to go do something on something his own. Better, yeah. Les Claypool claimed in response to that, that James was just being nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that he weird. was just too weird for them. <laughs> right. Cause he was like, I, I don't remember the exact quote, but like he apparently said like, do you guys want to jam on this? Cause he didn't know anything about metal. <laughs> And he just he said that as a joke, sure. more or less. But like he, you know, he didn't know anything about metal, and he's an insanely talented bassist. Oh yeah, where to the point where it's like not that Cliff Burton or Jason Newstead or the other guy whose name I don't know, um, uh, uh, um, from Suicidal Tendencies. Yeah, uh, I can't, not like I can't brain right now. He's that, great. True, Robert Trujillo. Yeah, there we go. Not that those guys are not incredibly talented, but mm-hmm. I. I Metallica does not call for no. something quite as 
complex as uh, what he would go on to do with Primus. Right. Uh, ended up being like be this complete, is, It's not the same thing at all. Primus is a bassist's band. Yeah. If you like the bass guitar and you haven't listened to Primus, what mm-hmm. are you doing? Right. This is the, the most... <sighs> He's the, he's one of the more unique uses of the bass. Yeah. yeah. Uh uh this is the this is the opposite end of the, like the cool interesting things I didn't know you could do with bass spectrum from yeah. Mirror Reaper. Yeah. yeah. Mirror <laughs> Reaper's on one end of like it's a six string bass that's the only guitar and it's 83 minutes long and uh, it's you know this getting so many different tones out of it but played super slow right. and 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 you know all the looping and all the reverb and you know different different mm-hmm. textures and then this is on the other end of the spectrum of just like look at me yeah. <laughs> just so just flashy and wacky and flashy yeah. and and impressive mm-hmm. intensely impressive mm-hmm. uh and just alternating between slap and and slap and tap and <sighs> there's there's yeah. so much going on with Les Claypool's Bass playing. It's very mm. interesting. Uh, for the longest time, I only knew Les Claypool as the guy who does the South Park theme. <laughs> right. Uh, and that's not the only cartoon he's done the theme for. I think he did. He, there's some other cartoon he did the theme song for. I got to check on that page here. Uh, Robot Chicken. Mm, he mm. does the theme song for Robot Chicken. Sure. Uh, which I did not know until uh, the other day when I looked it up. Well, it's the whole band. I mean, it's not just him. Yeah. Uh, it's, it is it is Primus yeah. in, in general, which imagine being, you know, however old Matt and Trey were in 1997 or whatever when South Park mm-hmm. starts. Well, they're older than me, aren't they? Uh, so, I think they're around your age, to yeah. be honest. Um, let's see. 1997, August 13th, 1997. How old, let's say, is Trey Parker? I was 23. Trey Parker is 50. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're not that much older than no. you. But uh, so, you know, 1997 rolls around and you've got these young guys sure. with this weird cartoon pilot and it it gets approved for a series. And they're just like, who do we ask to do the theme song? <laughs> how about Les Claypool from <laughs> Primus? <laughs> Imagine being like and then getting it, getting Primus to do it. Yeah. And him doing it, uh, though, of course, yeah. if anyone if anyone was going to like early South Park, it was going to be Les Claypool. Sure. Because he's um, kind of famously a pretty weird guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, and smokes a lot of pot. Yes. A lot of pot. Yes. Uh Oh, boy. It's, I told you that. Yeah, I did. Uh, that story I found just and not even looking for Les Claypool on the Internet. I just About, found a story. Jason Momoa. Yeah. Well, he was Aquaman like, shows up. He was doing like a week where he was like jamming with people. Yeah. Like, like after he was done <laughs> hanging out with Les Claypool, he went and jammed guitar with with Slash. <laughs> I didn't see that part. Jason Momoa is yeah. living his best yeah. life and uh, I'm mm-hmm. I'm happy for him cuz right. he's he seems like a very very cool and earnest dude. Mm-hmm. Uh and I'm very excited to to see him in in Dune. Uh yeah. last week, I mean before we recorded last week, we watched the trailer for Dune. I don't think we talked about it. That looks super good. It does. It looks really 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 good. Uh, and I'm I'm very excited to see that. Um, but uh, yeah, Jason Momoa is going to going to be in that. But yeah, just like he went, you know, got some bass lessons from Les Claypool, and then right. they went fishing. Right. Yeah. Because Les Claypool is also famously a an avid fisher, an avid fisherman mm-hmm. out uh, in San Pablo Bay. Specifically, he, he yeah. really likes fly fishing as well, yeah. as I understand. He likes yeah any kind of fishing, any kind of fishing. Good because you know what Claypool. you could do a lot of when you fish. Smoke pot. Yeah, I suppose. Because <laughs> it's a very just I'm gonna hang here and wait. Just gonna sit in this place. <laughs> yeah. Just gonna wait for something to happen. <laughs> it's oh, perfect. Look, something happened. All right, let's pull the fish in. What do I have? That's dinner, baby. Got a hundred pound sturgeon. <laughs> uh I don't know. I've never had I've never heard of anyone eating sturgeon meat. Yeah. People always go for the eggs right. because they want caviar. Mm-hmm. But I've never heard of someone actually pulling up a sturgeon and then filleting that. No, you'd never you'd never go to a restaurant. I'll have the sturgeon. I don't think you're allowed to do that, to be honest, in most places. But I don't know if you're allowed to keep a sturgeon. Really? 
So I know we have we have a sturgeon season here. They they give out a certain number of licenses. Yeah, I th- I think there is a a certain number to it. I mm-hmm. guess it's 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 more restricted than just like other kinds of fish where you just buy a fishing license. Sure. And, and then just get whatever. Are, yeah, you yeah, just, like paddlefish. You have to have a paddlefish license. Yes. And who eats paddlefish? You never hear about. I never hear about that either. Yeah, I don't know who, and and I don't know if it's because I mean, there's always a chance that you're just going to catch one. Yeah. And and then what do you do? Obviously, it's for keeping them. Sure. You have to have the license to keep them. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, who do you get to choose what kind of fish you catch? Yeah, it's, they it's, choose you. Yeah. So uh, they're and like a, Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, they're like Pokemon trainers. Yeah. <laughs> Although I'm sure there's something in the anime where like, sure, Dr. Oak is like the Pokemon. You don't choose the Pokemon, Ash. The, the Pokemon, Pokemon chooses choose you. you. <laughs> or some shit like that. I don't know. <laughs> I've never watched Pokemon. No, I've watched Pokemon. I, I was that weird kid who wasn't really into Pokemon. I had cards because uh-huh. it was the thing people did. It was and a game. so yeah. like I would like I didn't do anything with the cards. Mm-hmm. I didn't play the Pokemon trading card game. You just, you just traded the cards. I just, collected the cards. Yeah, I just had a small collection of cards uh, that I did nothing with. See, when the Pokemon card trading game was happening, I was collecting a different card game. It was Magic the Gathering. Yes, of course. Which was basically the same thing. <laughs> right. Uh, but just for older kids. Yes. Um, I was in my 20s. And had been around for, <laughs> for a bit longer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what I we're going on a... Primus. We're going on a gaming tangent real yeah. quick. I Quickly, I, I remember, was it you or was it like Roberta or somebody else that was into uh, Legend of the Five Rings? Uh, Roberta had a set of those cards. Not a large set of those yeah. cards. It had some, yeah. Because the story of that is just so interesting. Like the, the origin mm-hmm. of that game where mm-hmm. it was going to be just like, we're doing this one this one run of cards Mm -hmm. and the story of this world is determined by how you know certain tournaments end sure and you know the way that that down the way that certain tournaments Uh end is going to affect the next set of cards that we release and it's all going to converge and end i think it was like gen con 1990 Mm -hmm. something was going to be the end of legend of the five rings Mm -hmm. but it was so popular that the company decided to keep doing it and it slowly kind of faded (laughs) right from memory yeah and and sort of ruined the how didn't ruin but it perhaps lessened the the impact of how special that was that there was this big thing that had an end Mm -hmm. uh well it's like the final fantasy games that (laughs) that was supposed to be the final the final fantasy 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 is canceled yeah (laughs) yeah imagine if that had been the case if fantasy was canceled after the first final fantasy game which i think was in the late 80s yeah 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 uh imagine if fantasy had been canceled we never would have gotten lord of the rings the movie we never got would have gotten the movies or that mariah carey album yep (laughs) That's totally what I was thinking of next. I, absolutely. Mar- I, I could see it on your face. Yep. I could see the cracks in your facade. You were yep. going to say Mariah Carey. Yeah, that's that's that was the next thing on my list to talk about was Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> so Primus. Yeah. Uh, so you had mentioned probably before I was born, you uh, had listened to this album a many, many yes. number of times. So Primus. And I'd seen them in concert twice. Primus has theoretically been around since 1984, but uh, I think their, their release schedule has, was, uh, or their, like their, the, their number of studio albums, mm-hmm. uh, from 84 to 91 is remarkably few. Yeah, well, there's, uh, well, Suck on This, it was the EP. Yep. There, and then, of course, they had uh, Frizzle Fry. Yep, and I think that was their first, yeah, that full was length. their first full-length album. And then Sailing like, the yeah. Seas of Cheese was their their uh, label debut. Right. It was their, their major label debut mm-hmm. um, that uh, ended up being a, a pretty pretty resounding or at least now is mm-hmm. considered a, a pretty resounding critical success i yes. don't know if that was necessarily the case at the time actually they were pretty big i mean uh, i i saw them in 93 at uh, Lollapalooza. oh boy yeah my my buddies and i traveled all the way to uh, minneapolis to see Lollapalooza in 1993 primus uh alice in chains uh who else was it uh, um uh, uh, arrested development you've never heard of them uh <laughs> front you 242 mean the TV show <laughs> no uh oh babes in toyland who was oh there was this little known band that had their second album out and they were kind of uh, called tool oh you ever, yeah. you ever heard of them they, little known band they were, we saw them outside and man that guy was intense 
uh, Keenan uh, Maynard. Yeah, Maynard was a was Ma- a little intense. I felt Maynard was staring at me the whole time, but I was <laughs> baked out of my mind. So, I, yeah, I, he might not have been. It's that. Who knows? It was very intense. So who the Prim- Primus was on when Primus was on stage. At one point, Jerry Cantrell from um, Alice in Chains wandered out to play with Primus, and I'm like, oh, "This is cool." And I'm standing there. I had this leather hat. It was a black leather hat that I absolutely ball cap. I yep. really love this hat. And my friend uh, Chuck, who was with me, he says, oh, look, it's Jerry Cantrell. He grabbed my leather cap and threw it at him. Oh, no. Uh, on one hand, I'm like, oh, my hat's got my hat. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see that hat again? Nope. Never oh. saw that hat again. <laughs> Anyone out there, if you were at Lollapalooza in 1993. In, in Minneapolis. In Minneapolis. Uh, the Target and, Center. And you have OJ's hat. Yeah. Please uh, mail it to us. Send us a, a message on Facebook that I won't read. And, uh, and, and honest, I never because I I'm yeah. sorry for anyone who leaves comments on, uh, on Facebook. I just I is there a Facebook page for this podcast? Yeah, yeah we oh, I didn't even know, I didn't even know that. I didn't know there was what a do special you think page. We promo every uh, at the end of every fucking week. I don't never really thought about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Yeah, you know, actually, do you did you realize that these mics are rolling? That we're actually recording a podcast right wait, now. Wait, you're recording on what? <laughs> on uh, 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 magnetic tape. Magnetic tape. Yeah, I have a tape. I have a tape machine here. Sweet. It's a uh, mylar mylar rolling over there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> God, <laughs> I don't know who's recording us. Is uh, it you? You're recording. Yeah, us? I'm recording this right now. Jesus, I was wondering why we had to talk into these flat things. Oh, yeah, and these weird, these weird black cylinders that yeah. are in front of us. Who? Is, what are these? I don't even know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I also saw them again uh, a couple years later. They opened for Rush. Oh boy. They opened for that's, Rush in Minneapolis. That's well. a cool show. It was. It was great. Uh, we went down. My, my friend Scott was in college in St. Cloud. <clears throat> so we went to his dorm room. There's like six of us in his dorm room. And he, had a, he had a roommate. He was like pissed that we were there because <laughs> it was a tiny dorm room. And, yeah. like, uh, and we had three two beer and we we're chugging it. And and then and then we we got once again really stoned because we're yeah. going to go the, the show. Go see Primus and Rush. And then and all these people piled into my my hatchback. I had this tiny little Dodge Colt that everybody's <laughs> riding, riding in and, I, and I'm driving and I realized, oh, wow, I'm way too intoxicated to be on the interstate right now. <laughs> Oh wow! Oh wow! And then I remember hearing Jim going, "OJ, you need to speed up a little. You need to speed. It's seventy-five here. You're doing like forty miles an hour. They're honking at us. <laughs> like what? Oh Christ! They okay. all know. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. Uh, so do do you think this slaps? I would. Well, I mean, okay. literally in the sense literally that Les Claypool slaps plays bass. slap bass at certain points. It doesn't, it doesn't slap musically. Slap. <laughs> okay, Slap Danny. The bass. <laughs> Davey. Davey. That's it. Davey. That Danny. Good old Davey. Uh, yeah, it's Danny Carey. Yeah. From Tool. Uh, or, yeah. Or Danny right? Davey. Danny Davey. Danny, Danny Davey from Cradle of Filth. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. Just, I, if you, I didn't remember that's his actual last name. Yeah. For for me, it's it's Danny Filth, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it doesn't slap. I love this album. Yeah, I can, no, this is great. I, I I picked this last week, and and then I was very much enjoy. I, yay! I get to listen to this again. I was very yeah. happy. <laughs> Yesterday, I was in a uh, I was in a far better state to mm-hmm. listen to this. I I enjoy this. Mm-hmm. I was listening to it after I got home from work today mm-hmm. and my neighbor yeah. uh was listening to the same um dubstep or trap Oof. uh uh version. It was like a fusion between like reggae mm-hmm. and dubstep or trap where it had that like that that guitar note that is in every reggae song was sure. doing Dink, 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 dink. But it was that in between. And it was, I swear, it was on repeat. Like, I heard it like like five times over. Uh, and eventually they It was harshing stopped. your mellow, was it? <laughs> it was making my mood so much worse. Um, I'm sorry. But, uh, I mean, I threw the headphones in and was listening to this and mm-hmm. just like, 
fuming while I was making my dinner and everything. And you and can't then, be mad listening to Primus. Yeah, I, 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 I think it helped, but I was, just, I was not quite in the, the, the optimal place to be listening to this. But right. I, I, this is a very enjoyable album mm-hmm. for me. Uh, I, I think there was, there is some of the um, weird. Uh, uh, not a not a tonal, obviously, mm-hmm. but the the um, uh, I, I I don't know precisely what to call it. The uh, more dissonant parts of this album mm-hmm. that that kind of rubbed me a little bit of the wrong way today. Sure, yesterday it was fine, <laughs> but like today it was just like this is mildly unpleasant right now, <laughs> and it's bothering me. Sure, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I got over it, uh-huh. obviously, because this. I mean, this is this is cool. This is interesting, mm-hmm. funny, weird. Th- there's so many. I-, I have to wonder. Les Claypool sits down and thinks, "Huh, what kind of funny voice am I going to do for this one?" Well, he mostly just does this voice. I mean, yeah, it's mostly <laughs> that. And then it gets up like this, <laughs> and he does that. Here they come. <laughs> Here they come. Here come the best I heard it from a hammerhead chart. Uh, there's no, something like all week. Y- all week you've yeah. been just like saying <laughs> random lines from this that I am <laughs> astounded you have memorized. <laughs> I shouldn't be surprised because you've been listening to this for a long time. Nearly 30 years. You've been it. listening to this for longer than I've been alive. Mm-hmm. So I should not be surprised yes. that you know let all of the weird lyrics by heart. Sure. I should not be surprised. There's some great story songs in here. Yes. I mean, the story of, of course, Jerry in his race car and the story of Tommy the Cat. Jerry was a race car driver. Uh-huh. Uh, that was the big single from this. Yes. That and Tommy the Cat. I mean, how I'm just wondering because like, you know, you think of like. Oh, it's the new rock single. Sure. And I'm thinking of hearing Jerry was a race car driver on the radio. Fair enough, man. <laughs> it's just like I'm imagining being on the freeway in in Los Angeles, right? Yeah. I'm on my way to work. I'm listening to the rock station. I'm listening to the all to the like hard alternative rock station. Sure. These are the hits of today. Uh-huh. And suddenly, and you know, you go from like a from Nirvana or something like that. And I don't know. I mean, 1991 <laughs> might be a bit early for was yeah, Nirvana. The, was yeah, Nirvana that, big in 91? I think that was their breakthrough year. Or is it 90? Yeah. So you're listening 91. to some some Nirvana or something like that, uh, mm. and all of a sudden so the DJ's like, "That was Nirvana." Next up, we have a uh, new band here called Primus. They're <laughs> from the Bay Area. <laughs> Their new song, Jerry Was a Race Car Driver. Let's give that a listen. <laughs> what the fuck am I listening to? <laughs> well, actually, for me, it was Headbangers Ball. I suppose it was, yeah. It was Headbangers, watching Headbangers Ball. And I remember, I can't remember, I, we, were, we were drunk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't need to say that yeah, part. No, <laughs> we know. And, and, and I think I was getting up to go pee, and I remember hearing this and going, What the fuck planet am I on right now? (laughs) What is this shit? (laughs) This is on MTV right now? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And I think that, like, it is such a a testament. Like, I'm wondering if a band like Primus, Mm -hmm. in in this age of, like, post-irony in in all that shit, Mm -hmm. like, I'm wondering if a band like Primus could really, like, earnestly have a place today it, like if if primus had never been a thing right and someone they didn't started, have a history if it was like that movie where the beatles never existed in right the, the one guy who remembers the beatles if you're the one guy that remembers and knows every primus song <laughs> How well would you do? I don't know. know. If you're the one guy that remembers (laughs) fucking sailing the seas of cheese, how popular would it be if you were doing that in 2020? Don't you remember Primus? Dude, what the fuck are you doing right now? What is the, what are you saying? What the fuck is that? Are you going insane? Put that bass guitar down. Yeah. You don't know how to play that. 
<laughs> oh my yeah. god! Like, like I just <laughs> like I, I, I don't know because I mean, there's uh, there's still joke like sort of humorous bands. Well, they're not a joke band. But well, yeah, they're the joke thing. bands. That's yeah. what I that I was about. That's the thing I was about to say yeah. is like I, I don't know if there is a band that is as uh silly as mm. Primus that also is as earnest right. about about it and and is mm. so committed to such amazing songwriting ween i'd say it would be another band of that category but we but ween was around at the same time though. yeah and they're not around now i'm talking about like well and like now yeah i just i i don't i i can't quite think of like obviously there's bands that have you know that are they're novelty bands sure that you know, like like Beezlebubs or sure. Bel- Belzebubs. It's Belzebubs. Belzebubs. Yeah. There, there's Belzebubs, right? But I love Belzebubs. They are fan. I go back and listen to that. Uh, Pantheon of the Night Pantheon Side Gods, Gods is, is awesome. amazing. It's, it's great. Like, it's one of the best black metal albums of the last five years. Sure, it is. Uh, but, but like, like you know, they have a they you know. Or they have a <laughs> Necrogoblin. Yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> And and not to say that the songwriting in any of that is bad necessarily, mm-hmm. but it's oh no, they're they're great, they're great songwriters. But it or uh, Steel Panther, yeah, but but like <laughs> they they have they all have novelty. There's a True. novelty to all of them. Primus is not a novelty band. Yeah, Primus it is so difficult to describe <laughs> in so many uh-huh. ways, and they defy so any attempt at me trying to to. Uh, describe how uh, I feel. You just have to experience it. Yeah, you have to, you have to listen to Primus. If you haven't mm-hmm. listened to Primus, give it a shot. I totally understand if it's not your <laughs> thing. I a hundred percent get it. If you try listening to Primus and you're like, I this is, I don't get it. Mm-hmm. Primus sucks. <laughs> <laughs> They'll tell you're, you that you're playing right into their hands because that was their <laughs> slogan for a long time. <laughs> they went on tour with Mastodon recently, didn't they? Uh, maybe I don't know. Don't you remember they they were they did a like a, a special and it was it was Bill standing in a in a hallway and Les goes walking by. Hello, said to the camera. <laughs> they were on tour with Primus. That was 2018. Yeah, yeah I guess I I didn't remember that. Uh, <laughs> Ah, uh, <laughs> just kind of just bathing in the glow of the <gasps> of the idea of Primus. Have you heard the new Mastodon album? I, yeah, uh, yeah, or no, I haven't listened to their whole. I haven't. Is the whole Rarities thing out? Yeah, now? it's out. It's, I I haven't. I haven't. Uh, out, I, that was announced with that whole uh, Chef Troy R D. Oh, okay. I still haven't watched that video. I forgot about it. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. I'm gonna have to watch that here once it's we're done. Very strange. Uh, it's, it's great. It's master. And actually, yeah, the the it's it's a lot of uh, instrumental well, versions of yeah. of their songs. Uh, oh yeah, that's I I did listen to like toe to toes their and- instrumental version of um. Uh 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 ba, 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 ba. Jaguar God Jaguar God yeah uh, I listened to the mm-hmm. instrumental version of Jaguar God and it was so weird uh-huh. listening to the riffs without uh Brent uh w- I mean without all of it. they're all right. on that track but uh, Brent is kind of the the biggest part mm-hmm. of that track generally um, or Sleep in the Deep yeah I love that song I got uh, God okay I'm, now I know what I'm listening to uh, <laughs> tonight but right. um uh. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'll have to listen to to that. All right. Um, anything? What's your favorite song on here? My favorite song on here. Oh God, it's hard to say. I mean, I really loved the uh, you know Jerry's the race car driver. Yeah, Jerry's the race car driver song. But you know, the one that always comes to mind. I'm like anytime I'm in a room and I'm by myself and it's quiet and then some fucking assholes come into the office and I hear it dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Here come the bastards I heard from. <laughs> <laughs> Here they come. Here they come. Song. Well, and that also, I also like how it opens with, uh-huh. I mean, it opens with Seas of Cheese, uh-huh. but uh, it, there's, you know, the first full song is Here Come the Bastards, and then it closes with Los Bastardos, yes. which is the same <laughs> it's riff. It's a reprise, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a reprise. It's the same riff. It's mm-hmm. the same. Here they come. Mm. Here they come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they come. Here they come. Um, or is it luck? I love is it luck as well. 
Tonight, I will say, is it luck rubbed me a the little bit of the wrong way tonight? <laughs> that's because that is totally. Yeah, that, that's off the edge. That, that is, song. I think, the most uh, abrasive on the album is probably is it luck? I can play my bass for you. Is it luck? <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm going to because I'm such a sucker for for like really long closer tracks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll go with fish on. Oh, you know? fish on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also because the beginning yeah. the opening of that track is like the first the first time on this album that I heard something that sounded um, something that sounded serious mm-hmm. um, like the like I was listening to that it was just like oh yeah are we about to get introspective and then it went back to your regularly scheduled primus but it hooked me with that because <laughs> yeah. it sounds yeah. like the opening to one by metallica <laughs> okay which i like and there's some stand-up bass in there yeah like it like it kind of vaguely yeah. it's sort of the same like sort of atmospheric kind of noodly sort of thing as the the mm-hmm. beginning of of one in the sense of sure dun, 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 dun. you guys have never done you when i say you guys have been on this podcast for over two years yeah, now you've, you've been <laughs> you guys you know you guys that do the podcast you've you've been on you this album far or been on this podcast far longer than jaron was uh <laughs> we've never done a metallic album we at have all. we've not no we have we have we're a slayer album we yeah we've not done Metallica we've not done Slayer one Anthrax album no Megadeth no Megadeth so I mean it's, we're gonna have to at some point eventually that's just uh, it, it's kind of like the you know sort of the the rainy day thing of like everybody sure. knows Metallica sure. Slayer Megadeth they're they're good well, uh, yeah I, I just I want you want I want you to experience me at thirteen you know? I, absolutely <laughs> no I I totally understand that <laughs> but yeah I I I, uh, I think Fish On is is fairly. Mm-hmm. Uh, interesting also i'm just picturing it just makes me picture less claypool fishing sure i think is uh i was discussing you this with you yesterday where like before i have a good idea of what Mm. people in a band look like i tend to picture them as like an actor sure and for Mm. some reason when i hear less claypool singing i picture uh sam rockwell at his most (laughs) unhinged You know, in certain sure. roles like like uh, seven psychopaths or the- not even seven, a little bit of seven psychopaths. But most of the time, actually, the the crazy redneck from Green Mile. OK. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. I forgot he was in that movie. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's what comes to mind for uh-huh. whatever. I mean, I not for whatever reason, but be, because most of the time, kind of the character that Les Claypool is doing sounds like a crazy, weird redneck. Right. Which he is the opposite of. Yeah, which he is not. Um, like you hear this and you're almost like, oh, is this guy like from Alabama and is like making fun of his home state? No, no. he's from San Francisco. Right. Uh, or from the, the Bay Area. The Bay, I, think. General, I don't think he's yeah. from San Francisco, but like any. Uh, Anyway, <laughs> Primus. Primus. So, uh, what are you bestowing on this? Like Moscow Nadia Jabaga? I have to give it a gold because yeah. it's mine. This yeah, is this, this is my jam here. Like the cheese upon which it sails. This is uh, <laughs> this is this is a gold. Yeah, I think. this is this is very enjoyable, and I think I, I'm gonna have to listen to some more Primus. Sure. I think I'm. I, I, Isn't I, Frizzle Fry the Brown album? Uh, yeah. Uh, the a- anti pop. I'll have to. Where they lampoon uh, Kurt Cobain's widow, <laughs> which is which is awesome. Uh, wait, what the fuck? Okay, so I scrolled down on the Wikipedia page for yeah. sailing the seas of cheese. I'm looking at production, right? Going down, 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 yeah. down. Tom Waits, voice of Tommy the cat. Yeah, I did not know that. <laughs> I would not have. <laughs> Yeah, Tom Tom Waits appears on more than one. In fact, the the, the aforementioned why not? Why not? Why the, not? The aforementioned lampoon of Courtney Love. Tom Waits sings on that as well. It's Tom Waits and Les Claypool singing on the coattails of a dead man. That's the why name not? Of that song. Why not? Why wouldn't? Why wouldn't that be? Well, the I remember case? the Thor meal ago. You didn't recognize? It. No. Why wouldn't that be the case? We just talked about Seven Psychopaths as well. <laughs> Why wouldn't that be the case? It's fucking Primus. Anything can happen. Okay. Uh, so next week, uh, I think we're we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna deal more serious. We're gonna aren't do we? we're gonna do a serious downshift. Okay. Uh, for next week, I'm done and, with it. And and we're gonna do uh, the two 
Uh, I, we discussed this last week as well. We're going to do the two um, acoustic albums that uh, uh, the Wonder Years have released okay. in the last three years or so. It's uh, Burst and Decay, Volume 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, there are albums that I've actually, like, in the last year... I think I've listened to their acoustic tracks on those albums more than the originals. Really? It's just been my mood. So these are just new versions of older songs. Yeah. These are all acoustic <clears throat> versions of of older Wonder Years songs. This is Wonder Years Unplugged. Yeah. yeah. That, that's basically <clears throat> what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, unplugged and also accompanied by string sections at really? times and some horns and what like the they put a lot of effort into the into the arrange the acoustic arrangement of their songs the orchestration it's gorgeous does daniel stern over talk over any of this at all ever never okay uh (laughs) no they (laughs) he does not (laughs) now i'm just thinking of that um uh that Hard Times article, which is uh, Marilyn Manson, yeah, uh, denies playing bass in the Wonder Years because <laughs> <Yeah>. they <laughs> thought he was on the Wonder Years. Yeah, it's not him. He also didn't play bass in the Wonder Years. <laughs> so, Although Winnie Cooper grew up to be a, a hot math nerd. So, hey, all right, I'm down with that. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Until we get to that next week. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for listening. Check us out. Thank you for your time. Our, yeah. Thank you for your time. Uh, check us out on our uh, social media pages. Uh-huh. Like I mentioned, we have a Facebook page. Well, uh, we're on Facebook. Yeah. We're on Twitter, too. Really? Yeah. Um, we we tend not to respond to comments, but if you're interested in <laughs> listening through your browser while you're at your desk at work, or I want to like now that, see what then. comments there are. I, I want you to comment on something. Make it as negative as possible. I want you to say the worst, <laughs> shittiest thing you can. Do you want that to be your job? Do you want to be our social media? I'm moderator? sure. Just put me since, on it, dude. Since I'm the since I'm the editor <laughs> since I'm the the editor here. Yeah, uh, you you do the editing, and I'll do the social media, and just say terrible things. Be as brutally honest. Say how how. That's all we're gonna get now. Just just weird and effeminate assholes on the podcast. <laughs> okay, let's let's not encourage. <laughs> In any case, uh, that we're available there. We're yeah. available on your Apple mm-hmm. Podcasts, and um, come to our homes. No, nope, don't do that. <laughs> Don't do Tell that. us in person how bad we are. Nope. Don't. You guys don't. suck. Hey, you know how we talked about how I've been having a real rough time lately at the beginning of the episode? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Let's not make any of that worse. <laughs> Let's not exaggerate. I am the last person on earth uh-huh. that needs people to come up to me in public. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> you know, anytime my dad comes to visit or whatever, uh, he's always telling me, hey, it's, it's Owen from the radio. And I'm like, Dad, fucking stop. I don't want that. I don't I hate that kind of See, attention. I trained my parents very early on yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. In the sense that when I was in speech in high school, uh-huh. uh, I d- actively did not want them watching me at speech meets. Sure. I, I, I didn't even like, you know, uh, my friends or teammates mm-hmm. watching me in my rounds unless uh-huh. it was necessary. Cause like it just, it threw me off because I would do shit to like try, I would try too hard to like impress them and be mm-hmm. funny. Yeah. See like I'm spending so much time on this and, and you know, I'm, I'm actually funny. Uh, and, and yeah. you know, that if, if I thought about it, it was one of those things where I was worried about thinking about it too hard mm-hmm. and then I would suck. Uh, right. That I don't think that was generally the case, but I, I would get in my own head mm-hmm. about that sort of thing. Yeah. I just I, I wanted to remove that complication. That happened to me earlier. I picked up my uh, teenager and my teenager's friend was in the back seat, and I was trying too hard to be funny. And I had a little voice in my head going, don't try to don't impress that, the 14 year old girl in the back seat. You creep. Don't be that dude. Just stop. Your friends just think of you as an old man. Leave it that way. That's how it should be. You don't have to be the funny, cool guy. No, you're not the cool dad. You're just the dad. Drive the fucking car. Nobody, unless you're not even Tom Araya's kid, think he's his kids think he's the cool dad. <laughs> I know. Or his grandkids. Or his, yeah, it's probably his grandkids. His grandkids. He now. does. Have, he does. Yeah. Have, or, or not even, not even Corpse Grinders kids think he's cool. <laughs> 
Okay. I don't know. They love him. He plays video games with him. Oh, he like I think he's cool. Yeah. And I think he's a very good dad. But I'm sure his <sighs> kid. There are plenty of times where his kids are like, Dad, stop. And he's like, What do you What do you mean? Because he his speaking voice is right. so trashed. Yeah. At this point, he looks like there's kind of yeah. He he. I mean, he's Nathan explosioning it. In the <laughs> Not intentionally. He's death growled for work for so long that that's his speaking voice at this point. What are you talking about? I love my kids. <laughs> I fucking love my dad. My dad's fucking awesome. We go fishing all the time. <laughs> anyway, we were we were attempting to end Sign this podcast a, a while ago. Sure. Uh, so thank you all very much for listening to another episode of the Bronze Medals Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. Congratulations. Congratulations. We love you guys. Hey, <laughs> 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 <laughs>